In this video, we're going to take a look at duct typing. Now, this is a little bit more of a difficult concept to understand, but once you get it, it makes such sense, and it's probably a little bit more disturbing for programmers with experience in other programming languages. One of the unique things about Ruby is that it's very loosely typed, if you will. And what we mean by that is when I use variables, as you can see here, I've got a couple that are actually parameters starting up here, but you've seen it in other videos. I haven't declared what type they are. I haven't said whether they're a string or an integer or some other object or whatever. I just start using them. And Ruby kind of infers how you use it as to what it is. And how it does that, it just looks at what it can do. So where the term duck typing comes from, I think it comes from Dave Thomas, if I'm not wrong, of the Pragmatic Programmers, who came up with the concept of if it looks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. So as this relates to objects, say you send an object into a method, if it has the proper attributes for that method to utilize it, then it's going to utilize it, and otherwise it's going to kick back an error. And where this has such problems for people coming from other programming languages, say Java or C, for example, where you have to explicitly declare the variable type before you can use it, is it's a bit mystical because they don't say, well, how does it figure out? Well, it's easy. If it doesn't have the right attributes, you're just going to get an error. And their response is, well, you know, that's that declaring it saves me from it. Well, in the end, especially like in Java, all you're going to get is that you've modified your programming habits. In other words, that declaration stuff really ultimately is for the programmer. Yeah, it helps with some compiler optimizations and stuff, but it really doesn't help the, the program beyond that. It's really to keep the programmer in check. And Ruby kind of takes the philosophy that it assumes that you're going to be doing a good job as a programmer and understand what you want to do. So if you're going to send in a string to a method and you're expecting that object to have string-like behaviors, then that's what you'll do as a programmer. And if you make the mistake of sending in something else, then you're going to get an error and it was probably not what you intended it to do. So it just kind of saves a little bit of extra work there, but it gives you some flexibility. Now, it it can be hard to actually demonstrate in a clear way how duct typing works, but I, I've contrived a little example here. So our file name is dttest0901, and it should be in the working files for this video series. And it's just a real simple class I declared called dttest. I defined one method called add1. It takes two parameters here. And what it does is it takes the second parameter and it appends it to the first parameter. Now, it's we haven't covered arrays yet, but this is pretty common to how you add something to the end of an array. But I'm going to show you something that it doesn't work just for arrays. So I'm going to launch IRB, and again, I'm in the same folder as the file, so I can just do IRB and... Maybe I might not have mentioned this in other videos, but you can actually, if you got the readline library installed when you compiled IRB or, or inst installed IRB on the Windows, you can actually do tab completion. So it'll look in here and say, oh, there's that file, and it saves me. So what I did was I just typed in part of the name, and I hit tab, and it went and looked at the file directory and found that file. So I loaded up. Let's create or instantiate a object here. Now I'm just going to do, first off, I'm going to take a look and look at the methods here real quick. Now that's kind of messy. I want to show you a little trick. If you do a sort, and then let's do a sort, and then do a two, I think it's YML. Yeah. I don't want to confuse you too much, but you can do it this way. No, that way works. So that gives me a, a sorted list. I don't know why I didn't respond to that one, but oh, YML, that's why. But it gave me a sorted list of all the methods that this class, this you know, now it's an object I, I instantiated, but this responds to and add one is one of them. So let's go ahead and do, let's declare 
a string real first. So string equal a string. So there's a string. Now we're gonna do, and we're gonna send in that string, and then I'm gonna send in some more stuff here. And what should come back is a fully concatenated string. So it just added on there. Now let me quickly declare a an array, and don't worry about it, and I know you haven't had arrays yet. So I send in that array, and then I'm just going to add another number, and I'll send in 5 with it. And the behavior should be, it appends it on there and kicks it back to me. And there we go. So now you're seeing duct typing in action, where this method, as long as the, this object supports this operator, it's going to have the correct behavior. And if we look here, I guess it... Oh, I'm not looking at the right one, but if we do string methods, it should support it. And there we go, right here. So that's duct typing.